Hello, folks. Welcome to the Hire My VA Team and Business Building Podcast, where we help you to reclaim your freedom through hiring and thriving with virtual assistants without breaking the bank. And that means your bank, which is the most important one. And I'm Dave Braun, and I'm here with Larry Broughton, who's my partner in all things coaching, fantastic business mentor, and helps coach me in life. Ends walking with me as a brother through all of these life's up and down. So, Larry, say ups hi. and downs. Hello, handsome Dave. Hope uh, everyone listening and watching is having a great day. Uh, Dave, I love you. I'm glad that we're on this journey together. I couldn't ask for a better business partner than you. I appreciate. Well, you could ask, you but you won't get one. That's true. <laughs> 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 high five <laughs> yeah, we're, we're gonna leave that one in for sure <laughs> that's it for the day folks have a yep, good day we are done. <laughs> and on a high note all right i think we have a question <laughs> uh, for, for us, right? yeah. uh, all right question is drum roll please i need to drive sales to my business i need to drive sales to my business what should i do first and now larry before we talk about that yeah folks Think in your minds, what would you do or what should you do to drive sales to your to your business? Please think about putting some comments down below and saying what you would do, because that would help yeah. Uh, folks. Yeah. Okay? yeah. What are you doing? What have you done? Would you try that didn't work? Yeah. That's really good as well, because sometimes we learn as much from our failures and our mistakes yeah. than we do from our victory and our successes, right? And boy, wouldn't it be great if you could help somebody avoid a pitfall or help somebody navigate a roadblock that you've already you know, experienced yeah. before, but saying, Hey, don't do this. I did it. And it was a waste of time or money or energy or whatever, Yeah, you know, Dave. Yeah. So we, we deal with this all the time in all the different businesses that we're, we're involved with. And I have conversations all the time with salespeople. Like why do some salespeople go out and just slay it and they walk in to a business and can immediately close on that sale and start carrying the carcass back to the cave. While other salespeople who might have more experience, more training, struggle with this. Well, here's the thing, Dave, and I think that most sales and marketing and branding managers are gonna agree with me on this. And if you're a sales, marketing or branding manager, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. I think it's because most people will say that there's a lack of brand awareness for those folks who are really struggling. Imagine if you're trying to sell a product that no one has ever, or service that no one's ever heard of before, yeah. or people don't understand, right? Mm -hmm. um, versus somebody who's got national brand recognition, because of the recognition, there's a level of trust and appreciation for it already. It's right. easier to do the sales and it's quicker to do the, to do the darn sales. All right, they don't have to go in and spend 45 minutes explaining here's what this product or services they can walk in and very quickly close. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think I've seen a trend more and more in recent years. And I saw a survey recently about 2020 um, branding managers are going to be spending 70% of their time increasing brand awareness for their product or service this year. 70% of their time is going to be spent increasing brand awareness. Yeah, their product or service. So I think that if you are trying to drive sales, which we all need, what we forget about before sales must be marketing. Okay. So I would say if you're having a hard time getting sales, what do you need to do to actually build brand awareness and do the marketing, Dave? That's kind of where I'm thinking. About. I've got some tips on how to do that. But what do you think about all that pontification that I just shared? You think I'm oh, yeah, on track or off, off base? No, no, no. That's, that's where it starts. And like the last yeah. episode, we were talking about a sales funnel, right? And what that we did. Talked about e we talked about email. Email. And what then email we, said, we said, where does the email fit in your sales funnel and all that, right? Uh -huh, so right. so I think if you want to drive sales, you got to start with, well, and brand awareness is at the top. You've got to also make sure that you understand what your funnel is, what's the top, the middle, and... Sure. No, basically the bottom. And if you want to drive sales, you got to start understanding your numbers, where people are at, because it's driving sales is moving people down. And if you've got, if you don't, like you said, if you don't have any brand awareness, you don't have anybody up at the top to even push down. That's right. right? That's so you right. got to think, you, you got to start thinking about where is it that I need to concentrate to um, drive sales? And it yeah. starts with, right, um, drawing out your sales funnel. Yeah, yeah. 
Dave, there's kind of three things that come to mind right away on what we need to do to build brand awareness. Let me just touch on those quickly, if you don't mind, and we can kind of pivot off that. Will that work? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. I think that when you're a new brand, what oftentimes people forget is about there are, there are oftentimes co-branding and co-marketing opportunities or initiatives that you can do. Is there another product or service in the marketplace that doesn't compete directly with you, but complements you or your service or your product that you can then tap into their efforts? And then there's um, a credibility by association. Does that make right. sense? So, and, you, and you're borrowing kind of their audience as well, right? Here's an example. I want to develop a tortilla chip, Okay. <laughs> Well, is there a salsa brand that's out there already that they don't make? Because, you know, now some of them make both salsa and chips. But is there a salsa, a boutique salsa manufacturer out there or production company out there that's got a big list that you think it perfectly paired with it? Maybe you can approach them and do some co-branding stuff yeah. together, right? Um, so that's an idea of how to do co-branding or co-marketing to tap into other people's credibility and um, already built consumer or client or customer base, whatever it is that you call it. Right. Yeah. So that's one thing that kind of came to mind right away. The other thing is that I'm a big fan of, Dave, that, that you know, and that is PR, public relations. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and you know, any time that you have a new service initiative or a new team member, or you're going to a new market, you ought to be thinking about how do I get press for this, whether it's in the business journal locally, or it's in a consumer trade publication, or I was talking to a, 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 one of our friends, Dave, um, yesterday, who has got a national, or he's got a vodka, um, and he was going to be on one of the major uh, news channels this morning, because when we're recording this, we're heading into the holiday weekend. And so he was doing a special hot, you know, mixology thing, you oh, know, yeah. the backyard drinks with this vodka. Um, that's PR, that's media coverage, right? That lends credibility. And what I try to call it in, in this, in special forces, we call that, you know, being a force multiplier or in marketing, we say one to many, what one activity can I do that I'm going to hit a lot of people, many people, right? one article in uh, a magazine that your consumers, your clients read is better than you go out and trying to hit a thousand different people who actually might read the article or 10,000 right. people or whatever. So one to many, so PR. One day we probably need to do a whole podcast on PR. The yes. third thing is I'm gonna capture under is blogging. Okay, now when I say blogging, I'm also talking about social media. Because really, when, when you think about when social media first came on, an Instagram post is really a mini blog, <laughs> right? And there are still some people who write articles, right? Um, so any kind of social media and blogging is a way to uh, increase your brand uh, awareness, right? The most effective ones, though, Dave, are those that serve the potential client. Um, and there's a call to action. Right. Or we oftentimes forget that, right? Um, we do this in the hotel business oftentimes if we're getting a write-up in a travel publication, not an industry publication, but a, a consumer publication, we might have a call to action. Mention this code to get this upgrade, right? for yeah. instance, oh. right? Um, mention this and get that, okay? Um, so people feel like they're getting value. They're getting a kind of insider thing that no one else is getting because, hey, I happen to read Elite Traveler Magazine, for instance, right? So those are the kind of the three things that are kind of top of mind for me. Um, if you want to drive sales, you need to do marketing and brand awareness. And if you do the marketing and brand awareness, it's going to be a lot easier for your sales members or you or who's ever doing it to get the consumer to say, yes, I want what, you, what you're selling. Yeah. Now, oh, my, oh my gosh, Larry, there's so many things running through my mind now all the way from one of the great webinars um, programs that um, that we've got and that you've spoken on for years is called setting out the honey pot. I intentionally didn't mention that <laughs> <laughs> because it's in re-record mode right now. But yes, so, we will be re we'll be releasing that again. But it's setting like, out the honey pot. Yes. 
but it's like it's so that's that's that brand awareness Mm -hmm. and um so so the way i was thinking and as i was writing some of these points down on the brand awareness is that is kind of a um it it gives you immediate help of course but there's also the long term right it's a long-term play so you so it's 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 like if you need to drive sales right now are you going to go out of business of course you want to do this, but there's some other things that you could do like right now. Mm-hmm. Um, like um, I know in one of our Q and A's, we um, were talking about this and, and given some advice on it. And one of the things I think we talked about was like a referral blitz. Remember that? Yeah, I do. Talk about some of those, a couple of key components on that aspect of things. Um, so, yeah. Look at who's done business with you in the past, who's had a good experience with you in the past and reach out to them and say, hey, we've done business before. We're trying to grow our organization. Is there anyone that you can refer us to? It's as simple as that, right? Now we go into much more detail, but um, the blitz part comes from you've got to go through every contact that you've got. Don't be afraid to do it. What's the downside of it? What somebody's going to say, what you're, you want me to help you? Okay. <laughs> some, some people will say, no, I've got nothing for you. And other people might say, yes, it, here's, but it here's, here's, here, here's a couple of leads and, for you. And, ch- and chances are, it's not going to take, you know, like we talked about in the previous podcast, it may not take that many people, right? right. Really make a difference in your sales immediately. Maybe it's only a couple of clients. What I've seen, I've seen emails, Dave, where people have asked for referrals and they say, for every referral that you give me, I'm going to enter you into a drawing where you can win this thousand dollar Amazon gift card, right? For every referral. So if I, if you give me five referrals, you're going to get five entries into this. It's the whole give back. Right. Thing, yeah. Right. And you if, help and me, I, I'm going to help you out. And I think if you've done a very good job for your clients in the past, the people that you call mm-hmm. who've been your clients, they, um, I mean, they're going to, they'll, they'll respond. They'll, they'll, they won't mind having your call. They won't mind helping you. Yeah. Right. They would sure. look forward to it. Right. Sure. Yeah. Now, of course, there's there's another thing that you could do as part of that referral blitz. And it, it may take you a little bit of time, but Start thinking about your current clients and um, asking them if they need another service. Be familiar yeah. with what would be the next service that you could develop um, that would help them out. Yeah. Or like we talked about, if <clears throat> so if it's another service that they may need and you don't have that expertise, but you've got a few clients, you can always partner with somebody else who provides it and they give you kind of a a finder's fee for that as well. Yeah, it's one of those things where we talk a lot, Dave, about there's really only three ways to drive sales or revenue at your business. One is more consumers or clients, customers or clients. One is more revenue per transaction, and the other one is more transactions per client, Mm -hmm. right? And so this is the thing where you're talking about, if if you got somebody uh, who's already buying from you, is there something else? So at McDonald's or fast food places, you probably know this, it's the upsell and the um, suggestive sell. You're going to say, hey, I want a hamburger and a Coke. They'll say, is that a large Coke, right? Would you like fries with that? When they're doing it right, that's what they're supposed to do. Or if you go and say, hey, I want a quarter pound of cheese, a large diet Coke and a large fry, guess what they should be saying? Do you like an apple pie with that? There's always some kind of suggestive sell or upsell opportunity. Yes. Right. So uh, think about that. Is there something you've done that in your organ in your business in your uh, right? Instead of just building websites, can I host websites? Can I do security on websites? Can I do referrals for apps? Whatever. There are there are things that you can do in your business that adds an upsell or a suggestive sell as an opportunity to create a little bit more revenue. Yeah. And I think a good way to look at that is, is thinking about your clients and mm-hmm. we're, we're assuming you're coming at it from a perspective of you really want to help your clients, but look at them and say, you know, <laughs> what so. is, I hope so. Um, but look at them and say, what is it, what is it that they really need to make their business successful and then figure out how you can, put yourself there and help them be more, even more successful. Yes. Because your clients may need 
they may need to repurchase your service depending on what you did in the past. For example, like if you, you designed their website three years ago, they may be ready for a new one and they're yeah. just waiting for your call. Yeah, right. I'd like to hear from the folks who are listening or watching this, what, to, what have you done in the past to drive sales? Have you launched PR campaigns in the past? Have you ever done a successful, or again, maybe not so successful, co-branding or co-marketing initiative with another organization before? What are some of the tips that you've used uh, when it comes to blogging or social media that's going to drive more sales for people, right? Um, I still go back to, I think that we need to build this brand awareness first, yes. or at least concurrently, <laughs> you know, because if you're building it now, it's going to have long-term impact on the efficiency of your, your sales efforts for sure. So I'd love to hear what people have to say about this. Yeah, definitely. Please put in your comments. Um, maybe okay. one last thing that might make sense would be okay. is to, you know, there's there's going to be people that either on your list or that you know who um, haven't taken advantage of your service. They said no for one reason or another, right? You can always go back to them. Maybe the time is right. And then you can start thinking about, well, how can I sweeten the pot? Maybe I can give them something for free for a month or an extra like service along the side that will help um, seal the deal. Um, and one of the things that you could do is you could say, hey, um, you know, our monthly service, well, if you buy a year of that service right now, I'm going to give you two months off. So you're going to get two months for free, mm -hmm. right? So you can drive sales by discounting what you do. If they pay now. If they pay now, if they pay up front. Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, that's another um, a a way you can, you know, add some more sales to your bottom line right away. Yeah. 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 I like your reminder, Dave, TFTR, that just because someone said no in the past doesn't mean no forever. Sometimes a no really is a not now, you know, but if you've done the homework on the front end, why does somebody say no? Is it because the timing's not right? Because is it because the product is not right? Is it because the service is not right? Is it because the price point's not right? Right. And so when somebody says no, we need to, because this, this takes courage, it takes guts for our salespeople to do is, can you tell me why? You know, that's, that's a great point. You know, can you, just so that I, I don't want to waste your time and I can get better at this. Just be real. Yeah, absolutely. You know, is, is it that the product's not right? Is it the quality's not there? And they might just say, no, I've, I've got an agreement right now for this product or service and I'm really committed through the end of the year. Well, that's a piece of information you didn't didn't know. And so they say that. And so, so then you say, well, when do you do your buying decision? When's your budgeting season where you actually make these plans? Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's in, a in the hotel industry. Most people know that the budgeting season begins around, you know, August through October. Right. And so we're just inundated with sales right. calls during that time. People trying to get into the, the, the buyer pipeline. Right. Yeah. And they know that. And if they, if somebody approaches us in December or January, it's very unlikely that they are going to be, you know, switching horses at that point. So it's basically, if they're not ready now, ask them when they think they might sure. be ready. Sure. Yeah. Or when they just might have, be just have a conversation. Decision. Yeah. Just have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think above all, I mean, if you're going to, so if you're going to do some of this, right, if you're going to like start reaching out to some old clients that maybe said no, or your current clients who you haven't talked to for a while, try though to at least at the beginning, offer them something that might be helpful for them, right? Mm -hmm. Don't just all of a sudden say you haven't talked to them for two years and you ask them to buy your stuff. Well, reach out and try to be helpful yeah. in some way first. Good tip. That's a good tip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about, um, you know, brand awareness, yep. marketing, you know, co-branding with somebody doing PR, doing your blogging and social media, keeping going with that. We talked about, you know, a referral blitz, right? Um, yeah, like, by the way, at blogging, I would add what we do. Podcasting is under oh, there. Oh, yeah. You know? Whatever's natural for you, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. And don't, and, and, and so where we talked about this brand awareness being kind of a long-term play, don't let this time where you need to bring in sales now 
If you don't start doing something from a long-term perspective, you're always going to have the same problem. That's correct. Right. That's so so correct. you've got to couple this with doing a little more of a long-term play, right? Yeah. yeah. So we talked so, about that. So maybe right. a referral blitz would be one of the most effective things. If you need business now, now. That, that I, I might start with a referral blitz. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But okay. Awesome. And then, we talked about, you know, you can, as part of that referral blitz, offer what you do at a lower price or add a new service pretty quickly, maybe partner with somebody else that um, will that has something that your client may want and getting a referral fee for that. So, um, and then obviously going back to those who uh, had said no in the past, right? Yeah, I don't know that we actually said this out loud. I think we've kind of implied it, Dave. The power of the referral blitz is the warm lead. Yes. Okay. So it's not just um, you cold calling somebody. So I'll, I'll let's say that Dave has purchased something, a product or service from me in the past, and we had a good experience. I'd say, hey, Dave, do you have, you know, we had a good experience when you bought or used the, the service. Do you happen to know anybody else that might be like you that, you know, would get value out of what it is that I offer? And you, you might say, let me think about it. Let me get back to you. Well, guess what? You need to follow up with him on that. Or yeah. you might say immediately, yeah, in fact, I, could put, I should put you in touch with Gavin. I say, hey, right. do you mind making that that connection for me? Do you mind actually doing that introduction for me? Right? That There's power in that by Gavin now knowing, well, Dave's had a good relationship with Larry. You know, I'll take that call for Dave. Right. So I, so I think part of what you're saying is make it as easy as possible for them to refer you. Right. Sure. That's part of what you're saying. Right. Sure. And then make it to where they're doing the introduction as opposed to you still almost being like a cold lead. Yeah. And I hate to think that I even need to say this, but I do think I need to say this because I know a lot of people don't. Once if you have gone to the if Dave has given me a referral and then I build a relationship with Gavin. I darn well better be thanking Dave. Yeah. Hey, thanks for putting me in touch with Gavin. Um, we now have a relationship and we're working really well with each other. Or, or I should say, or and follow up with Dave and say, hey, things didn't really work out with Gavin, um, but I really appreciate the, appreciate the lead. If somebody else pops up in your mind, you know, I'd appreciate you know any more referrals that you, that you might have. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So. Folks, as we are getting ready to close this out, you know, what tips do you have? Do you, did yeah. you find anything that we said valuable to you? Would those be good techniques for you to use in the near future? Tell us how you are building up your brand awareness. Yeah. Right? Tell us how you guys are having, getting clients coming to you. Right. Um, all right. Anything else, sir? No, I think that's uh, about time to wrap this one up. Okay. Great. Well, thank you folks for joining us today. And remember, building a team is the way to reclaim your freedom. And we're here to help you. And we're here to help you with your business as well. Not just with your team, with your business. That's why we're talking about um, helping you increase your sales. So for now, though, we want you to do three things. Number one, subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already done so. Number two, give us a rating, preferably five star, or leave a comment below this video. Any comment, you know, we talked about that. Anything that um, comes to your mind, please uh, let us know and we'll answer that. And number three, go to hiremyva.com for more information on our course and community. Because remember, even without experience, you'll learn how to prepare for, hire, and thrive with virtual assistants. Larry and I have helped a lot of folks. We're continuing to help folks. We will for a while, I think, a long time because we love it. We love helping you guys get freedom in your life. So if you really want that freedom, Go to HireMyVA.com for more information. Yep. Hey, we appreciate you folks. We know that you could be doing a lot of other things with the time that you spend with us each time you watch this uh, video or listen to the, this podcast. So we want you to know that we appreciate you. We love you. Uh, and that's a real word that we do use in business, believe it or not, around, around yeah. these parts. Um, but I want you to do yourself a favor. Do the world a favor. You have something really powerful inside of you. Go do something significant today. All right. So God bless you. God keep you. God hold you. Here, my friends, go get them. Okay. Bye, folks. Bye.